to learn C first. Okay. So, but the thing is that, fortunately, we've been able to do a few sessions on C. We've been able to do, just to refresh your memory, we have done declaring variables. You know, for those of you who are not in the previous sessions, don't worry. These are things that you get, get used to very soon. We have done declaring variables. We have done loops, while loop, for loop. We have done all that. We have learned about functions. We have learned about function prototypes. We have learned about um, the basic structure of a C program. We have le learned about how to compile. We have learned about the difference between interpreted languages and compiled languages. So you see that all these sessions that we have done has actually, somebody says that he's struggling to hear the audio. Is it is it across board so that I, I see the problem is for my end? I can hear you well. No, I can hear you also. Thank you. And I think that pa, pa, pa me leering, I think the problem is from your end. So you want to check your connection. Okay. So today, what we are going to do is that for the sake of those who are not in the previous sessions, I'm quickly going to brush up everything that we have done in 10 to 15 minutes. I'm going to crash. I'm going to give you a crash course of everything that we have done from the beginning of these sessions till the last meeting. And then when we are done, I'm going to take you into the ALX project. I'm going to show you the project projects you'll be doing tomorrow and how you should go about it. And then when I'm done, I'll take you into another advanced project, another, I mean, the subsequent project. Then I'm going to show you exactly how to go about answering ALS questions. Because the fact that you understand the concept does not mean that you can deal with ALX. They can be very wicked people. Maybe wicked is too much, but just let me say it. ALS can be very can make you frustrating, frustrated. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna um, share my screen and then I'll take you into my Evernote to give you a crash course on everything that we've done so far. All right. Please kindly confirm if you can see my screen. Yes. Thank you. Yes, I can. Thank you. So in, in the next 10 minutes, I want you to buckle up because I'm going to run you at the speed of light concerning everything that has been done from the beginning of these sessions till yesterday or to two days ago when we last met. Okay, so please buckle up. What is programming? Programming is simply you talking to your computer, okay? You cannot co talk to your screen. You cannot talk to your keyboard. You cannot talk to your hardware. You cannot talk to your um, um, central processing unit. The way to communicate with your computer is through something called a programming language. So basically, programming is you trying to talk to your computer. It's as simple as that. And a computer program consists of code that is executed on the computer to perform a particular task. So let's say I want to, as a programmer, I want to write a program that, um, a program that can tell me which girl I should choose among five girls, okay? Now I need to write a computer program and I'm going to give my specs to the program. I'll be like, okay, I prefer, I don't like, tall girls, I don't like short girls, I want somewhere in between, okay? And I like light colored skin girl. I like girls with black hair or short hair or long hair, okay? I like girls with curves. I like girls with no curves. Everybody's preference is different, okay? So now I want to create an app that can differentiate various um, people. I need to give my computer instructions. I need to give my computer the specifications that, okay, 
this is how it should be this is how i want it and then the way to do it is to go through the conduit of a programming language basically that is all programming is about however when you want to talk to your computer there are various ways by which your computer understands this language when i'm speaking this way my computer might not be able to hear me and remember that computers only speak something called a binary language so this is what i'm talking about <clears throat> in every computing system the first thing just a moment in every computing system the very first layer is the hardware okay so in here you have your mouse you have your, your screen you're dealing with the hardware here so in here you have your mouse you have your screen you have um your central processing unit the very physical component of your computer then on top of the hardware you have something that is known as the kernel okay the kernel now the kernel is actually part of the operating system okay so let's say um you want your computer to perform a, a certain task for you now when you put your instruction inside your shell it now begins to talk to your kernel so let's say this is your shell and on top of the shell we have apps okay Either to what we have been introduced to in shell navigation, realize that you go into your um, program and then you are typing certain commands in here inside your command prompt, like ls, and it's going to list out things for you. Or sometimes you go in there and type pwd, and it's going to list out things for you. These are commands that you are passing to your shell. But actually, at the background beneath the shell is something known as the kernel. And the kernel is like the central component of your operating system. And remember that this time around, ALX, in ALX, we are dealing, dealing with the Unix operating system. Specifically, we are working with Ubuntu. Okay. So underneath your shell, so when you open that black interface or whatever color you want it to be, when you open it and you are typing these commands, what happens is that your shell passes this command to the kernel which is the operating system in terms of binary language because your computer only speaks binary language so when i pass let's say a command like ls to my shell the shell now comes and passes this command to my kernel then the shell um interprets or translates this ls command into binary language which is zeros and ones that only the computer can understand then now the kernel is going to interact with the computer hardware so let's say you want something to be displayed on your um, screen so the kernel is going to pass that command to your operating the hardware the hardware is going to return back to the kernel and the kernel will return back to the shell then the shell will output the command on its interface and the interface of the shell is called the terminal Okay, so for instance, when you when you go to a restaurant, you can walk to your counter or to the counter and then say that I want to order fried rice and chicken, or I want to order um, frog meat, frog meat, spice frog meat. Okay, for those of us who are from China, or I want to order um, um, roasted maize sprinkled with hot pepper and um, goat meat. Okay. Now, the counter is the interface of the shell. So that's the terminal. You talk to the shell with the terminal. Then the shell now comes into the operating system, passes the command to the operating system, and returns the output on your screen or the interface, which is the terminal. So the shell and the terminal actually work together. Let's say you have an app like WhatsApp running on your computer. You have Telegram running. You have Instagram running. Then you have facebook running okay so all these are various apps how do apps work on your computer over here whatsapp is working whatsapp is passing the commands to the shell 
all the way to the operating system. Then you send a message to your crush that I can't sleep because you want to start a conversation. Then the kernel will pass the, uh, the command, the output back all the way through the shell to the interface on WhatsApp. Final. I thought someone was saying something. Nobody was saying anything. Thank you. So now let's say you're running WhatsApp, you're running Facebook, you're running Instagram and various apps. The next time you try to open a certain app, your computer is going to tell you that you're running too many apps. You don't have enough memory. How does that happen? It means that all these apps are communicating all the way down to the operating system. And the memory, let's say your central or your hard disk is inside the hardware. The operating system is telling the hardware that too many apps are running. There is no memory on your system. Then now you shut Instagram, you shut Telegram, you shut Facebook. Then the, the message will be communicated all the way back to the operating system. And then memory will be freed in the hardware so that more applications can run. Basically, what I've just explained to you is what programming is. It is as simple as that. Programming is you trying to talk to your computer. And there are various programming languages that humankind has created for us to learn how to program. For instance, now here in my Evernote, I've made a list for you. Now I'm trying to take you to the very foundation because you're going to be doing certain things in C, okay? And ALX is going to ask you to do something. You'll be like, why am I actually doing this? If you don't understand the foundations, there is no way you can be able to do some of the things that ALX is going to require from you. Docker says that nobody's going to forget this analogy. All right, thank you. So now I want you to understand that there are various kinds of programming languages. Number one, before we even categorize them, just get to know that there are two main broad, two main classes of programming languages. There are the high level programming languages and then there are the low level programming languages. What do I mean by that? Now, watch this carefully. This is your hardware. So this is your keyboard, your mouse, everything your computer consists of physically, okay? So this is your hardware. Now, on top of the hardware is your operating system. Whether you're running a Linux or Windows or whatever it is, this analogy is always true. Then on top of the operating system, I've told you that there is the shell. And this is where you have always been typing in the commands that ALX has been frustrating your life with, like LS and PWD and touch and everything else, okay? So what you have been introduced hither to so far is the shell. So you have been typing commands in your shell so far. The next thing you're going to be doing is that you're going to start writing a programming language known as C. So now you need something called an IDE, okay? Then the IDE is an integrative development environment. It simply means that it is an environment in which you can write instructions to communicate to your computer okay so it's like a code editor you can write your commands inside the ide then the commands will be passed to your operating system to be executed so you can have an id such as vs code it's like a code editor you can have an id such as sublime text you can use atom there are several code editors or ides all right you can use um code blocks you can use pycharm depending on the kind of program you're writing but there are several of them. The IDE, I repeat again, is known as the Integrative Development Environment. I think somebody got to mute their, uh, their feed. Yeah, thank you. So the question is, what is the difference between high level programming languages and low level programming languages before i do that let me show you something with alx okay i'm going to take you into some of the projects that i have done then you're going to see something very interesting over here you are going to see that 
this category of projects that I have done already, they are saying that it is a low level programming language. So the first set of programming language you're going to learn is a low level programming language. Then when you are done with that set, they are going to bring you to another set, which is known as the higher level programming language, which includes Python. Okay. Why is it that ALS has categorized the programming language into low level and high level? And what is the difference between the, sorry, and what is the difference between these two categories? That is what I was explaining. I was explaining to you here. The low level programming language talks to the very hardware of the program. Okay. Low level programming language is, is a language such as C, C++. C sharp. These kind of languages are languages that interact with the very operating system. Okay, they interact with the hardware so because they communicate in binary language to the very operating system. Then high level programming languages are languages that need to be interpreted before the commands come to the operating system. If you don't understand what that means, don't worry. I'm going to make it very clear to you in a bit. Okay. Just hold on. I'm going to make it very clear to you in a bit. Okay. Now, so let's read a few things and then it will make proper sense to you. Before you write any instruction to your computer, you need something called a source code. Your, your source code can be in a file. It can be in a command line or wherever you want to store it, but you always need a source code to write instructions to your computer. And every source code has an extension. Okay, so let's say you are writing a C programming language, your source code will have an extension dot C, which means that it's a C programming language. Let's say you are writing JavaScript, your source code will have an extension dot JS. Let's say you are writing Python, your source code will have an extension dot p y okay now the process of converting oh, source code. Daniel. Daniel. somebody got to mute your feed the process of converting source code into machine language is what is known as compiling so to compile refers to the act of converting programs written in high level programming language which is understandable written and written by humans into a low level binary language understood only by the computer. Now examples of program, um, compiled programming language will be C, C++, just like I told you. And other languages do not use compilers. Instead, these languages will use an interpreter that will read and execute the code. Examples of interpreter programming languages will be Python, JavaScript, PHP, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay? So Let's talk about a few categories of programming languages. Then you're going to understand why C behaves the way it does and why you need to write the codes the way you need to write them. So for instance, we have a programming category known as machine language. This is just a binary language, zeros and ones. You're, there's no way you can understand a machine language. It won't make any sense to you. Only the computer understands it because it is their coded language. They don't want you to get it. And then there's also another category of programming language known as assembly language. It's a low level language. You're gonna understand what that means. Just relax a bit. Then there are also languages known as procedural languages. There are languages known as scripting languages. There are languages known as functional languages. There are languages known as object oriented languages. My advice to you for, for now is that when you are free, go to YouTube, go to Google, go and type different kinds of programming languages and then go and read on your own, go and study, so that you have a fair idea that, okay, so these are the kind of programming languages we have, and these are what they do. But generally, the information I want you to have for now is that there are high-level programming languages, which you as a programmer can understand. So when I'm reading Python, I can understand a certain command. Let's say I'm writing, I'm defining the function in Python. I can do DEF. It's a language which is like, written in English language, so you can read and understand. But a low-level programming language communicates with a kernel in binary language. So you cannot understand low-level programming language when they are compiled. So when I'm writing in C, 
I write in a language as a programmer that I will understand. Then what the computer does is that it takes that language and compiles it into binary code and then executes it in the operating system. Okay, so let's now zoom into C programming language and then find out what is C programming language and what it does. So C is an imperative procedural language. And what that means is that C, when you, you write, let's say, 100 lines of code in C, C must compile everything before it executes it. When I write, let's say, 100 lines of code in Python, the code is going to be interpreted line by line. So the, the interpreter will pick the first line of the code and execute it. Then to jump to the second line and it will execute it. Then to jump to the third line and execute it. That is not how C works. If you write code in C, the compiler is going to take the entire source code and change everything into machine language and execute it. So it's not going to do it line by line. It's going to compile the entire file before the execution is done. It has advantages and disadvantages. Now, one of the advantages of C programming language is that it is very fast. It is freaking fast. Let's say you want to go into game development. You don't want to open your game, Grand Theft Auto. Then the game is taking like five minutes to load. No. So many gaming programmers master C programming. So if you want to go into gaming or you want to go into kernel development or you want to go into operating system development, you want to work at Microsoft, you want to work at Apple, you want to work at IBM, you want to work at HP, you need to understand C. If you don't know C, Apple is not going to employ you. If you don't know C, Microsoft is not going to employ you. So C is a long, if you, you want to go into game or any gaming company is not going to employ you if you don't speak C, C++, or any of the low-level programming languages. You don't have a job with any of these companies. Let's just go and find one of these um, institutions and work with them as high-level programmers. But if you want to be a serious programmer who delves into some of these things, then you need to understand C. So my little advice for you is that check your path. What kind of programmer do you want to be? And then decide on which programming language you want to master. When I started, I mastered Python because I wanted to go into machine learning. And one of the very effective languages for machine learning is C, is Python, sorry, and artificial intelligence, All right? So if you want to be a C programmer, you want to work at some of these wonderful institutions, you need to know C. So one of the advantages of C is that it's fast, but a disadvantage with C is that if you find an error in your code, and you go and make, you go and correct the error. You now have to come back and compile the code again, all over again, before you can execute it. Everything I'm saying, I'm not saying it in the air. I'm going to demonstrate it for you to see it right now, so that it will make sense to you. Okay. So now let's go into my terminal, and let's. Um. I don't like the blue one. My favorite color is green. Thank you. So you guys know my favorite color now. Now you understand why I'm always using a green terminal because my favorite color is green. All right. Okay. So here I am in my terminal. Let's create um, a file. Okay. Before I do that, let me create a folder. Then let me call it, um, I'm going to call it somebody's name here have Danita Okea, All right? Danita Okea. So I'm going to call this folder Danita, okay? I'm going to cd into it. I'm going to cd into Danita. As you can see, there's nothing inside Danita. It's empty. So I'm going to clear my screen. Good. I'm inside Danita now. To me, we are going to write a C program. So let's start writing a C program. So the first thing you need to do is to create your C file, okay? So let's touch and let's call this our file another name here. I, I can't name this file a very complicated one like Chiamaka because Danita, hi. <laughs> if I start naming my file chiamaka.c, I'm going to fall into trouble. Please forgive me. Yes, I see a very simple name here Yusuf. Okay. So I'm going to name this file Yusuf. 
dot c wonderful so i'm going to ls for you to see that now we have created a file called yusuf c all right wonderful i'm magnifying my screen so that we can see the fonts very clearly i'm going to clear my screen and ls again so you can see that we have a file here called yusuf.c i'm going to less for us to see if there's anything inside this file and as you can see it is an empty file there's nothing inside it all these commands that i'm using ls mkdir less all these are shell commands and i expect that by now you should have these some of these commands at your fingertips the more you are doing it the more you're getting used to them so this less command just lists the contents of your file you know what ls does it just lists the contents of your directory blah 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 all right so let's let's i don't know whether i should use vs code or whether i should use vi but according to alx the only editor you are allowed to use are vi vim and emacs so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to open my visual studio code and do something in it then i'm going to see you how you can implement that in vi according to alx you're going to see why i'm saying that very soon so i'm going to open my vs code And I'm going to go into the file yusuf.c. We're going to work together, all right? So the file yusuf.c is empty. There's nothing inside it. Let me get rid of this. We're going to create a simple program that just says, hello, another name here. So as usual, for, for those who are joining the class for the first time, every C program has a basic structure. And that structure is what I'm about to write out. So. If you are in the class for the first time, the first thing you do when writing C files is to include your header files. And I'm going to include my header file, the header file. The syntax to do that is to bring the include and then you bring the name of the header file. This means that I'm including the standard input and output .h. All right. It simply means that this STD IO you are seeing over here is actually a file. It is a file inside the C programming language you may not later on maybe in the future class i'm going to take you into this file you are going to understand why it works the way it does okay but that's not for today's class but this standard input and output you are seeing over here is an actual file that exists inside the c program now when you call this um file then you can you'll be able to use every function that exists inside it we have already spoken about functions we'll talk about it a bit today then the next thing you want to do is to include your main function. So int main, and decide to make a void or not. But then, then you bring your curly braces and your main code goes in here. This time around, we are just going to write a code that prints hello world. But we are not going to say hello world. Let's just say hello. Let's say hello, um, Akusia. Akusia Akitesia, Akitesia, oh, Akusia Akitesia, wonderful. So let's say hello, Akusia. Right, and as usual, you don't want to miss your semicolon. I need you to pay close attention here now, all right? I need you to pay close attention because we are about to talk about the compiling process now. If this was a Python program, if I run this program, What's going to happen is that the program is going to come take this line of code execute take this empty line execute take this line of code execute take this line of code execute then give me my result c does not work that way what c does is that the compiler is going to read every line of code and create a new file which is an executable file that's only the computer can understand let's see what i mean by that but before we even run this code you have to know that we'll talk about compilers in a bit, but let me open this. As you can see, I only have one file here called yusuf.c, okay? Now I'm going to run this program and let's see what happens. So I run this program and then as you yeah. can see, suddenly another file called yusuf has been created. I didn't create this new file. I only created this one, but because I run the program, suddenly a new file has been created. I didn't create this file. All right, then the program runs, hello, Akusia, as you can see over here, okay? 
let's go to my terminal and see what happens in there. So inside my Danita directory, I only created a file called usu.c. Now I'm going to ls and let's see what's in here. As you can see, a new file called usu.c has been created in my terminal. I didn't create this file. What happened? So what happened is that just a moment, I'm receiving a call. Mm -hmm. uh, please let me call you while I come in class, okay? Just, just give me one hour, 30 minutes. Thank you. I'm sorry, guys. That was my wife. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> what was the shouting for, though, guys? See, if I don't pick that call, if I don't pick that call and tell her that she should give me some time, when I'm done and I call her, we are going to fight. <laughs> we understand. <laughs> Because I'll be calling you, and I was calling you, I called you five times, you didn't pick. I was in class, calm down, girl, just calm down. Uh -uh. I was in with somebody, I was in class, Chiamaka and Danita and the others. Okay, all right, so, um, <clears throat> yes, what was I? So I created usub.c, but suddenly when I ran my code, a new file which I didn't create has been brought. Now, let's be, let's be, ambitious and open this file and see what is inside so the new file that um the computer created i want to open it and see what's inside it so i'm gonna less yusuf okay and when i enter it says that you may be yusuf may be a binary file do you want to see it anyway yes now look at what i'm seeing on my screen this is madness this doesn't make any sense to me. This is madness. Okay. This is madness. All right. I just got to get rid of this place because I don't see nothing. Why is this happening? I'm going to explain to you what just went on. But before I do that, let me clear my screen and show you something. I'm going to LS. So inside my folder, there is Yusuf and Yusuf.c. When I open Yusuf, it contains gibberish. Nothing I could understand. But inside Yusuf.c is a program that we wrote. So let's less Yusuf.c. Okay. So Yusuf.c. All right. And as you can see, this is the program we just wrote. It prints hello, Akusia. That's the program we just wrote. Now I'm going to exit from this place. Okay. And inside this Yusuf file is gibberish. But I'm going to show you something. I'm going to try to execute this Yusuf file. All right. So, and if you want to execute a file, the, the way to do it is to use dot forward slash, all right, dot forward slash. So I'm going to try to execute this file, which contains gibberish, and then let's see what happens. So when I try to execute this file and enter, it runs my program, and the program says, hello, Akusia. I didn't bring a new line. That's why you're seeing this. What does this mean? That, does this make any sense at all? This file that contains gibberish. I just run it and then it gives me my program. This is simply telling you that in C programming, when you run a file or a program, the computer is going to create another file, which is an executable file. That file contains binary code, which you, the programmer, cannot understand. But the computer understands that program. It is as simple as that. You don't have to worry yourself to understand what is inside that binary file, but the computer can read it and give you the output of your program. This is what compiling means. Okay. And that is the very first thing you need to understand in C programming. If you miss this, you're going to be in trouble because these are your foundations. Just understand that when you run a file, another file will be created, which is known as an executable file. It is a compiled binary file. I'm going to take you deep into the kernel and then let's see what is actually happening here. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to clear my screen and then I'm going to LS. As you can see, um, we have the two files we created. You see, no, the one file we created and then the new executable file, which was generated. But there is something you need to know. Before this Yusuf binary file was created, 
there was so much that went on in the background and this is what alx is going to test you on tomorrow in your project i'm going to repeat it again your test from alx tomorrow is going to be what i'm about to explain to you so you want to pay attention here i said that when i run this file this file was created but before this file was created so much went on in the background and your test tomorrow from alx is going to be that tell me yeah, the question from alx in tomorrow's project will be that tell me everything that went on in the background before this file was created and that is what i'm going to show you okay so before this file was executed there is a process that it goes through and it is known as the compilation process okay i have an acronym that i usually use for it i love acronyms because it makes me remember stuff okay now let's go into our sketchboard docas has been telling me to use the jamboard i have no idea what that, that is but maybe tomorrow i'm going to say the end <laughs> Um, explore the jamboard to see um, how it works but for now I'm comfortable with my sketchboard so just permit me for today to use my sketchboard Docas, please don't come and swallow me I beg you okay I love acronyms all right keep this acronym in your head because that's what ALS is going to test you on tomorrow Where is my pencil? Is it again? Where is my pencil? I cannot find it now. Where is my pencil? All right. This P here refers to pre processing. Okay. This C here refers to compiling. This A here refers to assembly. And this L here refers to linking. And this entire process is what is referring to as compiling a code. So this entire process is referred to as compiling so before you compile a code you have to go through pical pical which means that the code first needs to be pre-processed it needs to be compiled it needs to be assembled and it needs to be linked and these four steps are referred to as compiling now i'm going to take you into one of the alx projects for tomorrow all right so tomorrow you're going to be doing see hell world all right then the width of this project is one but not too scary all right now <clears throat> take this advice from me whenever you come into your project the first thing you want to do is not to open these resources i've said this over and over and over even on my youtube channel and people don't know why i keep saying that and the reason why I keep saying that is that you're going to open these resources and you struggle. I'm not saying that they are not important because I always come back to these resources. Even today, today, as I'm speaking to you, I've come back to read some of these resources. All right. But as a beginner, when you're starting, this is not your first point of call. No, it's not. Your first point of call is the learning objectives. When you open the project, the first thing you want to do is to come to the learning objectives and make sure you run these things in YouTube or ChatGPT. Okay. So I think somebody got a mute. They are. Thank you. Right. So when you want to, when you, before you start the project, copy these learning objectives and run them in ChatGPT or Google or anywhere you want to find the information. What this is going to do for you is that it's going to give you a very good foundation to start with. 
a very good foundation before you now come to the resources to find out what is all this about okay you don't want to stop that so for instance let's try just one of them so who invented c must i now go to google and find out who invest inventor c when chat gpt can tell me so let me pick one which is a little obscure so what is an entry point all right so i'm going to bring it to chat gpt and give it to it so what is an entry point in programming let me increase this then i'm going to enter bam, 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 bam. as you can see chat gpt will take his time to explain to you what an entry point is now just to read a few statements he says that in programming an entry point refers to the location in a program's code where the execution of the program begins it's as simple as that so in just one prompt we know what an entry point is it's as simple as that now let me take another one and let's let's pick another obscure one such as gcc and then we'll explain what gcc is how to compile using gcc now i've already explained to you what compiling means it means that we are going to take your source code which you created we are going to convert it into machine code that a computer can understand and execute because your computer only speaks binary language and nothing else so we need to give the computer a binary code to execute that is the process of compiling so one of the learning objectives of tomorrow's project is to know how to compile using gcc so we are going to find out what gcc is okay so i'm just going to take my question as a prompt for chat gpt how to compile using gcc then i'm going to enter mm -hmm. now alx is expecting you to go and look for information to know be able to answer all this and it's supposed to happen in 24 hours your projects are going to be released in 24 hour differences so if you don't find out and find strategies to move fast at the speed of light you're going to end up copying and pasting that is what that is the mistake i started making when i started out i was working i got so overwhelmed the only way to survive is to copy and paste okay if you don't copy and paste you won't survive you either drop out defer or you can't do anything so you need to come up with strategies to move fast because ALS is moving at the speed of light if you don't move fast you want to waste too much time on something that's gonna that's supposed to take less time i'm sorry for you this program you cannot survive you just hold on you're going to understand why i'm seeing these things in a few weeks time now i asked chat gpt what it means to compile how to compile using gcc okay then it tells me that what you need to do is to write your source code we just did one by creating a file called yusuf.c then you open the terminal or command prompt you navigate to the directory in which your file is you compile your code using gcc okay then this is the code you're going to use to compile a program so let's say if this is the program we created which was which was yusuf.c the way to compile a program is to use the command gcc then we bring the name of our file then we bring a dash o flag which means an output all right then we determine the name of the file we want our file to be stored in the output file okay then now the program can be executed you remember that i told you that if you want to execute the file the the syntax to use is dot forward slash all right so you can see chat gpt saying that use dot forward slash to execute the, your program that's the output file and it's also showing you how to do it even on windows but we are not using the windows system so we're not even worry ourselves with this and in just one prompt chat gpt has given you information that will take you one hour to find on google listen the information we just saw if you and we don't have time i would have showed you if you like go to google go and try and search the information on stack overflow or google it won't come to you straight like this ever never never the breakthrough of our programming journey is chat gpt that is why i keep heralding chat gpt all the time because what we just found just a few months ago for, for the information to come to you like this 
you either will have to watch a one hour or 30 minutes youtube video of a certain indian guy which accent you won't understand or you go to google and go and read for one hour but chat gbt has given it to us in a few minutes this is a breakthrough if you don't take advantage of it i'm sorry for you i can't help you so what you want to do tomorrow when the project is released is that copy all these learning objectives go and give them to chat gpt to do the work for you explain when you understand you have a, a basic i'm not saying that you get all the understanding you need but at least chat gpt will help you get a foundation now when you are done come back to the resources and then open your resources and then you can watch the youtube videos that they are giving to you go through all the files and then you can have a very firm understanding in a few hours you can use one hour or two hours maximum to do all this okay because you don't have time now we are moving forward so what this gcc that is part of our learning objectives what does it actually mean what is gcc itself like what is what is gcc all right now gcc is a compiler okay for you to run through this process there are several compilers in existence in a programming world. And one of the most effective C compilers is called GCC. Okay. Let me get out of here. Get out of here. Let me just get out of here. Get out of here. All right. Now, let's go and find out this GCC thing. What does it mean? GCC compilation. These are notes that I put together when I was, st I was studying. So, you can actually have access to these notes. They are my ever notes. Let me just share them with you. Today, I feel like being kind. So I'm just going to copy the link of this note. Then I'm going to put it in a chat box. Oh, what happened? I didn't copy it. Copy this. It's in a chat box. Sent. Okay, I'll just share the link to this note with you. Okay, so now the full meaning of GCC is GNU Compiler Connect um, Collection. It is a free and open source compiler system developed by the GNU project. It supports a wide range of programming languages, including C, C, blah, 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 blah. Now, the GCC compilation refers to the process of using the GCC compiler to translate source code written in these languages into executable machine code that can be executed on a specific target platform. So basically the GCC is simply a compiler. Okay. Now the, the process of compiling is what I've already expl explained to you, PICAL. Remember the acronym PICAL. So you pre-process, you compile, you assemble, and then you link. To pre-process, all you need to do is that the source code goes through the pre-processor pre and the, the perform tasks such as it includes the header files, expands macros. Don't worry about understanding these yet. In the compilation, it just compiles it into assembly code. Then the assembly, it just generates binary code. Then the linking links all the files in the program together to generate an executable file. So this is the process of compiling. Now, let us zoom in into ALS compiling process and find out why ALS is so stressful. Okay. When you go into your project, Lord willing, tomorrow, you're going to see some a few things here. They're going to try to scare you with a few requirements. So when we come to the requirements, you're going to see something. It says that the allowed editors are VI, Emacs, and Vim. All right. And all your files will be compiled. We spoke about compiling. They're going to compile your, your files using Ubuntu, whatever, whatever, using GCC, okay? ALX uses GCC to compile any code you write. Now, this is that they are going to use the options dash wall. 
dash wero dash extra dash pedantic dash std whatever whatever this thing is which i don't even understand okay now the reason why you run a code through als so let me just go to one of the tags okay and then let's say i want to run this code what you do when you write your code is that you check your code all right the process of checking while you are checking als is compiling with everything that i read up there with gcc dash wera dash extra dash everything that I, I i i read before you are going to see your checker checking okay now let me go back to the requirements and show you something you really need to be paying attention here so to the requirements so als is going to compile your code using dash wall dash wero dash extra and these are specific things that happen during the compilation process so for instance <clears throat> i put this together for you in the notes you can just read it the dash wall flag it enables additional warning messages okay that's where treats all warnings as errors so even if the warning is not an error in alx they will tell you that you have an error in your code these things will make sense to you soon don't worry from tomorrow going then the dash extra enables supplementary warning messages and then the dash pedantic emits warning so they are just warning flags the dash D specifies the c language standard to use during the compilation so basically what these flags are doing is that they are warning flags you leave a small space or you you leave a small corner a comma you are supposed to bring a comma you didn't bring it als is going to give you errors like you are <clears throat> you are going to rob a bank <clears throat> and the reason why the alx system is that way is because they are using very wicked flags to compile their compilation flags are robust they, they are they adhere to very strict rules so if you don't um if you don't follow their strict rules you are going to be flagged and your checker will not check i think somebody got mute their feed somebody got to share their feet yeah mute all right thank you all right okay back to it we don't have a lot of time so like i was telling you guys alx is wicked because they are using very wicked flags i'm using the word wicked intentionally I, I know what i'm saying because these flags that they are saying that they're going to compile your code with they are they are one of the flags they are there are hundreds of flags that you can use to compile your code some of them are really flexible but these these ones you are seeing over here ah they are wicked you make a little error they won't forgive you your code is going to bring errors so that is alx for you they want you to become mark zuckerberg or elon musk or um um, um dennis richie or brian kernigan they want you to become those guys so they want to punish you to get there so they are using very wicked flags when they are compiling your code okay and as for these ones you already you guys are already familiar with um, creating a readme and blah 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 you did this in your shell so you know how to create a readme and all that now then it also says that there should be no errors or warnings when compiling your code and i tell you to get no errors with these flags only only god can help you now then it says that your code will also be compiled with the betty style guide what is betty is betty somebody's girlfriend or betty is somebody's mother okay betty is simply a program it is also another unix program which your code must adhere to even though the code or program you have written may be working all right in another system it doesn't mean that it will work with betty because betty has a strict compliance guideline that you need to follow for instance in my terminal we wrote a code called yusuf okay now when we run this code so let me gcc and then run yusuf okay dot c when i run this code ls i'm gonna realize that another file called a dot out has been created i'm gonna explain to you what this means all right now when i run a dot out 
remember that when you want to execute the code, I said the syntax you use is dot forward slash. When I run this code, it runs my program, hello, Akosia, and that is the program that we wrote earlier on. Don't forget it. But I'm going to clear my screen and Betty this file, okay? So we can see that our program is working all right. There's nothing wrong with our program. It's perfect. But I'm going to Betty this file that we just created called Yusuf. And I'm going to enter and look at what happens. This says there's an error. What kind of error is in this code? There's no error. The code runs all right. There's nothing wrong with this code. It's running all right. We saw it that it, it just printed out our program, which is hello, Akosia. But Betty is telling me that I have error in my code. I'm telling you, the fact that your code works does not mean it's ALX compliant. I need to hammer this over and over or else you are going to be frustrated. Hmm? There is a certain particular format that ALX wants your code to be in. So we have done a lot of sessions in the past weeks. Please, the fact that you understand the concept does not mean you do exactly what we taught you. In answering ALS projects, please follow their guideline. We told you that to print a program, use printf, but ALS will tell you that don't print your program with printf. We don't like printf, use something else. I'm telling you something which ALS wants to do to you just tomorrow. <laughs> now, for instance, this is the next project you're gonna do. I think it's the third one or so, which is functions and nested loops, okay? let's. Go into functions and nested loops and see some of the requirements that they want they, they they want you to follow for instance as usual you're going to use these wiki guys i have a, a, a name that i call all of them but if i tell you you guys will say i'm mad okay so the dash wall he's a very wiki giant i call him goliath and then dash Wero, i call him behemoth okay that's for just by the way now als is going to use these same guys to compile your code and then look at what they are saying over here he says that you are not allowed to use standard library remember last two days i taught you that the standard library is like functions that have already been written for you and you can call them and use them at will als is telling you that you cannot even use include standard input and output dot h that's madness i'm telling you watch watch this so I'm going to come into my code and make this disappear and close my terminal. So you see this code that we wrote, this standard input and output dot h you see over here is part of the standard library. Okay. And if you don't include this, you cannot print f. All right. This print f is a part of the functions inside the standard input and output dot h. So without this, you cannot even print this. But ALX is telling you that do not include any standard library. Any use of functions like printf, puts, etc. is forbidden. That is madness. But you are allowed to use underscore puts car. What this simply means for those of you who are in the functions class, I think somebody got to mute their feed. Yeah, we got it. Yo, I see Harry Finn. I see Harry Finn. Brother, 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 brother. I miss you, bro. I miss you, bro. I miss you. I miss you, bro. I miss you. My bro, my G, my G, my G. I miss you, bro. I miss you, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Right on. Thank you. Thank you. You're doing great. Thank you. All right, so let's just go back to it. So, um, where were we? Okay. Where's ALX? Yes, here we are. Huh. So, <clears throat> ALX is telling you that you cannot even use system. No, like these guys, no, no, this is not okay. Okay, this is not okay. He said that um, you can't use um, printf, you can't use put. You are only allowed to use put car. Like who, who, who even writes a code without including standard libraries? But ALX says that you can't include standard libraries. That's what I've been talking about. That the fact that you understand the concept does not mean you can answer ALX questions. 
they intentionally want to trample on your freedom. So in order to answer such a question, what you need to do is that you need to go and write your own function. You need to go and write your own function, which is put car. Okay. We are going to, before I close, I'm going to, I'm going to actually show you how to do it. I think I have about 35 minutes more. I'll show you how to do that. We are not yet at this project. This is like the third project you'll be doing after Hello World. So I want to focus on the Hello World for today. Then in the subsequent classes, we'll figure out how to do this. But for, for those who are in the function class, they know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> then they are also telling you that the prototypes of all your functions and prototype of the function put car should be included in a file called main.h. Remember, we spoke about prototypes. Your prototype includes your return type, <clears throat> the name of your function, the um, the parameters, then your code, your block code. Then now you're gonna return the function. So the, your prototype is simply the return type, the name of your function, parameters. Okay. Then the ALX is telling you that don't include the prototype in your main code. Create a new file called main.h and put all the prototypes of your function in that file. So for instance, just to help you a little bit, let me just, you know what? Let me just go into my web terminal. I'm going to cd into ALX low level programming. I'm gonna cd into the functions project. I think it was zero X zero two, right? Great. I'm going to ls, you see the files in there. Great. So these are all the files of the projects that we did. You're going to see that there's a certain file called main.h. Okay. Now let me less the main.h file. And let's see what is inside it. What do you see, Docas? What do you see? Sir? What do you see? Right now, of course. Right yeah, now, what do you those see? are prototype, uh, prototypes, prototypes of our file, right? Exactly, they are. So, if you're in the functions class, then you understand that this is definitely the return type. This is the name of the function. This is the parameter. It means that the parameter is void. So, all these are prototypes. For instance, this is the return type. It's an integer. This is the name of the function. It's alpha. And these are the parameters. This parameter is an integer. Okay, then for instance, let, let me look for another data type parameter. So um, I think that's that's all in here. Uh -huh. This one returns two parameters. So this is the return type. This is the name of the function. And then this one takes two parameters, which are integers and it, which is an integer and an integer. Okay, so ALX is telling you that instead of including your parameter in your function, create a new file altogether called main.h and then include your prototypes in one file called main.h. Later on, we're going to understand why they, why they ask you to do this, okay? But that's for functions. Today, we don't want to go too much into functions. Let's just stay with Hello World because of tomorrow, tomorrow's projects that they release. The point I'm trying to make here simply is that ALX has their own structure. To, as much as you're learning how to program, you need to know how to survive the ALX world. That's all the points I'm trying to make. Okay, so let's go and try and answer one of our questions and see what exactly is going on here. Let's try and see what's inside this quiz. See if you can try. Which command can be used to compile a C source file? Just being in this class, you should be able to answer this. It's like just being in this class is more than enough. Which exactly. In which category belongs the C programming language? Come on, guys. Today's class, you should be able to answer language. this. Thank you. Compiled what language. Is a common... Thank you. What is the common extension for a C file, C header file? Dot H. Thank you. Dot H. You guys are too good. What is the common extension dot for C, a C dot source C. file? <laughs> I feel like. The answers are there. The answers are there. <laughs> oh, like. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are you guys are too smart. <laughs> no, so actually, I, I was not checking the answers due to what you yeah, explained. Okay. True. So, what are the different steps to form 
an executable file from C source code. Remember the acronym? C A S. Yes. Remember the acronym? Yes. First, need to pre-process. You compile. You assemble. Then assemble and link. Pickle. Remember the acronym. Very simple. Then, yes, sir. Which of the following are both valid comment syntaxes in ANSI C and Betty compliant? Now, as wow. for comments, I think Engineer Dennis did a very good job on that for you guys. So, to write comments in a programming language, you already know what to do. It's simple and straight to the point. I think even ALS didn't include one. This is actually correct. Yes, okay. this number one, yes. Yes, this is supposed to be correct, but the fact that it's but correct. It is not it. Thank you. Thank you. Whoever said that, I need, to, I need to buy ice cream for you. Ah, okay. Yay, I where's my ice cream? You can convert it into cash. <laughs> cash. Sir, I, I can help you to deliver it, sir. I can help you. Who said that? Yeah. Who said that? Ungozi, Ozokwe. Ungozi. Ozokwe. What is what is the equivalent of hundred CDs in Naira? Two hundred thousand. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a hundred CDs to me. I don't know how to divide it. <laughs> sir, 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 you divide it. You divide I have witness in the house, though. <laughs> yeah, I am with me already. I'm not joking. I'm I'm serious. Say give me night. Oh my I'm god. Serious. So who who was sir, it? Sir, we have five years, sir. No. It was said because it, it was Ngozi. Ngozi. It was Ngozi. Please talk us. Ngozi. Please yeah. link up to it tomorrow. I'm saying a hundred CDs equivalent in Naira. Uh, uh, I am. Uh, hey, I'm going to collect my share. Yay! Sending it to me will be easier. <laughs> oh shit! <share. laughs> Thank okay, you, sir. Then. Let's move on. Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot, sir. So, um. Yeah, back to ALX. You guys, the, the questions are really simple. You realize that if you you understand the concepts and you've been in the classes, you realize these things are actually doable. You are becoming a very strong programmer. Okay. So even though this is a way of commenting in C, it's not Betty compliant. So the answer is wrong. Okay. So this is the way to comment in C. You bring the forest slash asterisk mm -hmm. and comment. So let's try it out in our own program. So, let's, let's. Just a moment. Hello? Let me call you back. Okay, just let me call you back in a moment. I'm in a class. Sorry. Okay, so for slash asterix. Then we can say that this is a comment. Wonderful. So what happens is that when you're is compiling this code, the comments are not added to the program. So this is the comment. It's not part when the program is being run, it will not be part of the lines that will be run it's as simple as that now let us now try and um, answer like two of the tasks and i'm going to leave the rest for you okay i think somebody got to mute their feed that will be obafemi olaba <laughs> well i call his name is heartbeat Okay, so ALX, write a script that runs a C file through the preprocessor pre and save the result, result into another file. The C file name will be saved in the variable this. <laughs> the output should be saved in the file C, okay? I'm not going to answer it exactly, but I'm going to show you how to do it, okay? In my own terminal and remember that it says that we should pre-process we are only going to pre-process the 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 four steps decal pre-processing compiling assembling and linking this time around 
this question is not saying you should compile everything okay it's only saying that you should do the pre-processing so like i was explaining to you over here Where is my sketch? Wonderful. Good one. This one. So like I was explaining to you over here, there is a PICAL, which you go through. You, comp you pre-process, you compile, you assemble, and you link. Okay? And the acronym is PICAL. What ALX is asking you to do right now is that you're only going to pre-process. You are not going to compile. The way to pre-process is the command gcc-e, okay? This flag, remember when we were compiling, we used gcc and the file name. But for you to be, for you to only pre-process without compiling the entire thing, going through all the four steps of PICAL, you only need to use the dash e flag. So let's go try it out. And then ALX is telling you that the, the result should be saved into another file which means that you have to output the file and bring another file name so let's go try it out in our own program okay the program that we wrote i'm gonna ls our program is called yusuf.c and it contains hello akosia the way to pre-process is to type gcc so we are going to pre-process we are not compiling pika all the four states we are only going to the first level they want you to know what happens in the background during the compilation process. So the essence of this project is that they want you to understand, okay, so when I'm going to compile, there is pre-processing, there is um, compiling, there is assembling, there is linking. Now they are telling you that forget about the last three and focus on the first one, pre-process and let's see if you know how to do it. And the way to do it is GCC-E, okay? And you bring the name of your file, which is soup.c remember we created this file together all right now and don't forget that alx says that your result should be put into another file and the way to do that is to bring an output so dash o the dash o means an output and then we you bring the name of the file you want the output to be inside and we are going to call this file It all sounds nice to me. So I'm going to call this file it do. Okay. Now, I'm going to enter and let's see what happens. So I just entered. And in this simple process, my file has been pre-processed. How do I know? I'm going to ls and see what's in there. Then suddenly, I see that it do has been created. That is amazing. Okay. So let us try and see the content of this Ido file. Okay. Let me go to my Visual Studio code and see what's happening in there too, because it's the same thing we are doing. As you can see, the file called Ido has been created. You see? Ido. Because we told the preprocessor that output the result into Ido. So let us try and see the content of Ido, what is inside the Ido file. So I'm gonna open it and look at what's inside it do does it make sense to you look at this look at this look at this listen we are looking at how many lines of code here five five hundred and forty two five hundred and forty two lines of code okay five hundred and forty two lines of code just for a simple program that prints hello akosia the preprocessor has generated another file which contains 542 lines of code. What is he using it for? Okay. So when you run the preprocessor with the flag dash E, a new file will be created, and that is the preprocess file. And it contains code that won't make any sense to you. So I'm gonna go into my Evernote and let's read what this file contains, what it actually means. What does it do? When you pre-process a file, it removes comments, number one. It includes header files, number two. It replaces macro name with code. 
we, we understand what this means when we do macros and other concepts later on okay so the pre-processing does all these and that is the essence of this the do file that has just been created with all these things we don't even know what it does what it means and what it is it's just amazing okay so now let's forget about Ido and let's go to the next question alex is asking so we know how to pre-process now so you know how to answer this question basically what you have to do is to go to the name of your file so create your file of course you already have, you already know how to create your directory so you are going to create your directory you're going to create a, a repository first in your github called alx low level programming when you are done you're going to clone that repository to your intranet your your terminal then you cd into this then you now create a new directory called hello world cd into it create your readme and everything you already know how to do all that from shell navigation to you already know how to do all that you are good with that now and when you are cloning your repo don't forget to do it with your access token or else it's going to give you problems when you're trying to push it will keep asking you for your password you're going to struggle so clone it with your access token you come and create your file and inside the file you are going to enter the command that pre-processes the program it is simple and straight to the point and that is what we have just done over here so you just have to use gcc-e the name of your file and output it to the output file they want you to. I wish I could. Don't worry, you can do it. Let's just go to the next one. I'm sure you can do it based on what you have learned. Now, the next thing is the compiler. It says that write a script that compiles a C file but does not link. Okay. The C file name will be saved in a variable this. The output file should be named the same as the C file but with the extension dash o instead of dot c so let's go try and answer this question in our own way okay so our main file over here is called yusuf dot c okay now the question alx is telling you is that compile the file remember there are four steps in compiling there is a pre-processing we have seen the pre-processing step and this is how you pre-process alx is now telling you that now come to the next step which is the second step and compile it and let us see they want you to know what happens in the background and they are telling you that the file that you created to use to answer this question create an output file with the same name but this time around the extension will not be dash c the extension will be dash o okay the extension will not be dot c sorry not dot dash but dot the extension will not be dot c it should be dot o so let's try that out okay so the way to compile a file is compile is compilation is gcc dash capital s you bring your file name then the name of the output file okay now let us try this out and let me also share this note with you Wonderful. Great. So I also shared this notebook with you. Okay. So the syntax to be able to compile your code is GCC dash capital X, your file name, and then the output file name. Let's go try that to R. Now, let me clear my screen. Let's do that. So I said what GCC dash capital S, right? Then the file name is Yusuf dot C. This is the file we are going to be working with today. And ALX is telling you to create an output file. Remember, I told you that dash O means you're outputting it to a certain file, which you're going to indicate the name. And it says that use the same name as your file. So this time around, Yusuf. And it says that the extension should be dot O and not dot C. So instead of using yusuf.c, your file name should be whatever the file name is. This time around, it is what? It is one compiler. So you should understand that your file name will probably one compiler.o, whatever I want you 
name it okay but we are naming it yusuf.o that's our output file let's enter and see what happens okay now i'm gonna ls as you can see suddenly a file called yusuf.o has been created in our compiling process now let us be ambitious and find out what is inside this um um, yusuf.o file as you can see the file has been created so i'm going to click it and see if i can make sense of the things inside it and as you can see look at this let me minimize it so you can see what we are dealing with here something has been created inside our file which we didn't create and this is what is known as a mnemonic code okay when you compile a new file with a mnemonic code inside it you don't understand it but your computer does okay and you can actually see something that makes sense in there you can see hello akosia over here see let me, mag let me magnify it a bit see there's hello akosia here but there are other things in here which really does not make sense to us this is a mnemonic code it contains some code which might make sense to some portions of it might make sense to you but most of it won't you don't have to worry yourself to understand it because it's a mnemonic code. Now, in my Evernote, it says that the compilation process generates a mnemonic code. And that's what we just saw. Finally, ALX is going to ask you again in the third question to write a script that generates the assembly code of a C code and save it in an output file. Okay, then we go through the same process. Now, they are, they are saying that the output file should be named the same as the C file, but with the extension .s instead of .t. Let's go try that out. And the command to assemble your code is gcc-c. Then you bring your file name and output it to the name of the file you want to output it to. So ALX says that we should generate a script that assembles our code, an assembly code. That is the third level. The first level is that we pre-process. The second level is that we compile. The third level is that we assemble. ALX is now asking us to assemble the code. And the command to do that is GCC, that's small c. So let's go try it out. So let's assemble this code, GCC dash small c. And then the name of our file is yusuf.c. And we are going to output it to yusuf. Dot s because alx is telling us that we should use a dot s extension instead of dot c guys you want to follow these instructions to the dot because if you don't you're not going to your checker is not going to check you're going to have errors okay you want to follow the instructions to the dot so now you use the name of the file uh, dot s extension then when i'm done let me enter and let's see what happens wonderful okay so i'm going to ls and let's see what we have in here suddenly we have a file called yusuf.s that has been created now let's be ambitious again okay and try and open this file and see what is inside it so i'm gonna go into my vs code you don't you don't necessarily have to open it in vs code okay you know what let me just stop working with vs code let's work only in our terminal so i'm gonna clear my screen our ls again and this is our file yusuf.s okay now i'm going to be ambitious and try and see the content of the yusuf.s file. So I'm going to less yusuf.s. Thought it wrong. Yusuf.s. Okay. Then I'm going to enter. And it's telling me that this file I'm about to open will, will, will hurt my soul. Do I still want to open it? Why not? Losing a little blood didn't kill anybody. The people who built our, civil our civilizations, they lost blood. So if you want to hurt me a little, why why worry? So I'm going to say yes by pressing Y. And just like I predicted, it hurt my soul. So as you can see, the file yusuf.s is a mad file. It's a mad file. Okay, It's a mad file. And this is what? This is an assembly code. It's a mad file. Whatever is in here, if you try to read it, you're going to end up on the streets of Lagos without clothes on. Don't try to read it. It doesn't make sense to you. So I'm going to quit. Okay? Now, 
this compilation, this assembly um, process converts the code to binary code. So guys, look at something. We wrote this program, usu.c. This is the th only thing we did, though. We wrote this program, usu.c. Let me magnify it. This is all what we did. This is our program. The program prints, hello, Akusia. And look at the amount of information that just compiling this simple program, look at the amount of information it's producing. It makes no sense. It's too much. And that is C, programming language for you. The reason why this is the case is that that executable file you see over here, known as usu.s, can actually take that file alone and give it to a computer to run. And the, the reason why it's so advantageous is that it can run freaking fast. It can run freaking fast. It can run in milli milliseconds. The reason is that this usu.s file is a binary file. Even though when we read it, it doesn't make sense to us, but the computer can read binary files. So instead of letting the computer go through the entire process of pre-processing, compiling, assembly, and then all those long process, you can just give the computer usu.s file that run this file, and it's gonna run freaking fast. This is the advantage of C programming language. It takes you down to the hardware. It, it brings you to the computer, to the operating system and your programs can run very fast. That is why C is mostly used in developing gaming applications. You want to develop games, you want to know how to program in C, okay? So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to try and run this usu.s program and let's see what happens. And I've already told you that the way to run the program is dot forward slash. So I'm going to dot forward slash the name of the file, which is usu.s. And let's enter and see. It says that permission denied. Why is my permission denied? Let's try it again. I'm gonna clear my screen. I'm gonna try and run Yusuf.s and enter. Permission denied. I don't know why they are not allowing me permission to run this file. Let me try and run it as a super user gonna run Yusuf S dot forward slash Yusuf dot S and enter and it's not allowing me because I don't I think the reason why it's not allowing me is that now I'm talking to the kernel I'm talking to the operating system in running this program so it needs administrator permissions. So instead of running it as this user, I probably has to run it as a root user, but don't worry about that. That's not why we're here. That's not why we're here. But to run the file, if you run forward, forward slash in the name of the file, you should run your program actually. Don't worry, I'm gonna come back to this. Just hold, give me a moment, just hold on a bit. Before, before we do that, let's go to the final step, which is the linking step. Then it says that, oh, hold on, hold on. So the reason why, um, the reason why we couldn't run this file is that that is not our executable file, okay? We are now going to generate our executable file, which we can run. So this is the um, um, assembled file, okay? This is the assembled file. It is not the executable file. So I'm going back again. The reason why we couldn't run this program is that this is not the executable file. It is the assembled file, which is the third step, All right? So we are now going to create the executable file, which we can run. And that is the third question for your project tomorrow. Let's see if there are any questions here. Okemi okay, is saying that I may need to do change mode A plus X, you see dot S. We'll try it out and see. I like trying things out. So we are gonna try it out and see. All right. 
then who says something um Emmanuel says that I'm glad to join this community. Ngozi says that I'm really glad to be here. I've joined the community. <laughs> that is so cool. And then um, Amazing says that all our facilities are actually very amazing with their own special uniqueness. Yes, yes, you're right. I feel that uniqueness too. That's wonderful. Thank you guys for all that. All right. Now, in the, um, in the next question, ALS is going to ask you to write a script that compiles a C file that creates an executable named C is fun. This is the final step, which is the linking step. Okay. So just like I explained to you in our Evernote, you need to pre-process, pre-process, compile, assemble. And the final step is the linking. So to link, the command is simply GCC. Very simple. GCC. Our acronym is Pical. Let's make this a little big, like 30. Okay. And let's make it bold. And let's put it in red ink because it's dangerous. Okay. Let's even make it bigger, like 72. Wonderful. You need to keep this in your mind. That's what your project is going to be on tomorrow. Okay. Keep this in mind. You need to keep this in mind. Pical. So, Finally, ALX is asking us to link our file, which is the fourth step. And the command to do it is just GCC your file name and you output it to the name of the file. Okay. So ALX says, ALX says that the name of your output file should be C is fun. So let's go try that out in our own terminal. So we are going to GCC, GCC. Let me clear my screen just to make this a little bigger. see there on the flow let's make it big 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 okay so we're going to gcc the name of our file is yusuf.c okay and we are going to output it to c is fun because that's the name ALS says we should use okay now i'm going to enter I enter an ls let's see the files we have in here as you can see a new file called c is fun has been created and as usual i like to be ambitious so i'm going to clear my screen and try and see the contents of the c is fun file so i'm going to less the less command means that you want to see what is inside the file okay so i'm going to less c is fun a new file we just created and let's see what's inside it, it says that yeah, i'm about to hurt you are you still are you sure you still want to open this file why not Docker has been hurting me every day but if you hurt me a little don't, don't do anything to me so i'm just gonna say yes and as you can see it's an, also another mad file it's a mad file this is a mad file okay i don't want to read it because i don't want to end, end up on the streets of um accra with no clothes on okay but this is the interesting part. I'm going to clear my screen. This is the interesting part. The C is fun file that we just linked is what is called an executable file. So I'm going to now try and run the file and see what happens. So I'm going to dot forward slash C is fun and C. Boom. And suddenly our program, hello, Akosia can run. This is what I was saying earlier on that if you give this executable file, let me ls. If you give this executable file, C is fun to your computer to run. It's freaking fast. It's freaking fast. <laughs> That's because it's a binary file. I'm going to my VS Code and see if we can view the file in VS Code. Okay. So where's the file? C is fun. I want to open it and see what's inside it. Open it. Look at this. It makes no sense. Look at this. Look at this. I'm still scrolling. Look at this. It makes no sense. This is a binary file. Okay. C is fun. However, this file that makes no sense over here. When we give it to our computer to run it, dot forward slash, and we run the file, it gives us the output. Hello, Akosia. Amazing, right? Really amazing. That's because the computer understands the program. So what we have understood today. 
let's see if ALX is asking for something more. So we did the linking process. And then now it says that write a program that prints exactly. Programming is like building a multilingual puzzle, followed by a new line. Use the function puts. You are not allowed to use printf. What did I tell you? So if you are using printf to, to print this program, all you have to do is suggest um, write printf and then you bring this test, test. And it's just simple as that. But ALS says that you cannot use printf. You are supposed to use puts. Now you need to go and understand how the puts uh, function works before you can now come and use it to print this program. For those who are in the functions class, you should be able to do this, okay? But remember they said you shouldn't use any standard library. Did they say it in the requirements? Let's see if this one, they want to, let's see. Requirements. Okay. Okay. So over here, they didn't say you shouldn't use any um, standard library. So you are free to import or include standard input and output .h. You are free to do that. And the moment you do that, you can easily comment. Where is the question? Yeah, you can easily come and put and then print the string, just like the way you use printf. Those who have been in the previous classes, you understand how that works. It's really simple. And then write a C program that prints exactly with proper grammar, the, with proper grammar, but the outcome is a piece of art, followed by a new line. And this time around, they said you can use printf. So that one, the, you are free, cry. It's just straight to the point. You are, it's so simple. Just printf and bring the text in quotation marks. And then number six says that write a program that prints the size of various types of the computer it is compiled on. It means you're going to use the size of operator. Write a script that generates assembly code into a syntax of C code and save it in an output file. This is similar to what we already did. Then the advanced tag says that write a program that prints exactly this, followed by a new line. You are allowed to use any functions listed in the name section of the man. Printf, blah, blah, blah. It's simple, straight to the point. And that is it for tomorrow. That is it for tomorrow. So this is going to be your first project tomorrow. Basically, what we have learned today and what this project is about is that they want you to learn how the compiling, the, com the compiler works. That's all the project is about tomorrow. They just want you to know how the compiler works and what you need to understand to be able to know that is PICAL. You need to know the syntax to be able to pre-process, compile, assemble, and then link. And it is a linking process that creates the executable file that you can run. And it's as simple as that. Then in this notebook, I also teach you how to use the ones that they were asking, okay? So how to print a text using printf. I've explained it in a note. We have run out of time, so I can't go into all that. And then also how to use puts and put car. Printf, those who are in the other classes, you know how to use printf. Then put works the same as printf, it prints a string. And then put car prints only a character. So I explain all these things here. Okay. So you can just go, I've put a link of a notebook in the, in the chat box. You can just go through it and then you can they can help you. Then one of the requirements of the program, the 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 project is that you should know what is the default program name when compiling with GCC. And they actually, the default program name is a.out. That is the, the executable file that is created when you compile a file without indicating a name. What do I mean by that? Let's try it out. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to try and compile this file without indicating any output file. Okay, so let's ls and see what we have here. We already have the file a.out out here. I'm going to delete it. So let's remove a dot out. Now ls again. You can see a dot out is gone. So I'm going to clear my screen. So I'm going to try and compile GCC to let's see. I'm not going to tell the program to output it to anything. Okay, if I want to. The program to output it to a file then i'll bring dash o and the name of the file the output file but this time around i, I want the program to choose its own output file so i'm just going to do gcc and i'm telling the program that compile usu.c 
let's see what it does so i'm going to enter and now ls again and see what's in here and as you can see a file called a.out has automatically been created i didn't create this file so when i try and run this file dot forward slash a dot out print out my program hello akosia so the default file when you compile your program the name of the default file is a dot out and alx expects that you also know this because it's part of the requirement and the learning objectives okay you can see it over here it says that what is the default program name when compiling with gcc and you already know that now it's a dot out if you pass this to chat gpt it's going to tell you it's as simple as that let's see what else i have in my notes um so you know what this means you know what this does gcc the name of your program is going to compile you know what the output does it outputs it to a file then we have also spoken of betty style later on you will go deeper into betty style okay and then what does it as it as it do return zero what does it do it just quits the program how does the main function influence the return value of a program um, i think that's also straight to the point I'm going to explain one last thing and then we'll close. This is very important. I need to, I need to explain to you what an entry point is. Okay. So let's use like a minute to explain that. And then we are going to end today's lecture. Okay. You know how to compile now, blah, 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 blah. So we need to understand what is an entry point course it's part of the learning objectives good so i screenshot this from one of the resources you're not going to see you may not see everything in here but don't worry i'm going to explain it to you okay for those who are in the functions class you know what this code does basically should i magnify this good That's too much. That's too small. I wish I could. You know what? Let's use my VS code. I think it will make things easier for us so that we can see it because the fonts are too small. Okay, look at this. Okay. Every programming language has an entry point. The entry point is where the code execution begins. So if our compiler is going to run this code, I think somebody got to mute their feed. Somebody got to mute their feed. Thank you. Now, so if our compiler is going to compile this code, what happens is that it doesn't start from include. No, it doesn't include the library first. What it does is that it starts running from main because this is the entry point of the program so it's going to now um, assign the data to this assign memory to this and then when it's coming to use the printf function it will now come back to the include the library standard input output and then pick the printf from over here and then now come and use that function to execute hello akosia so the entry points of the program is very essential because that is the point where the program begins execution. And the reason why I'm telling you this is that it is part of our learning objectives. ALX expects you to know what an entry point of a program is. It says that what is an entry point? Pass this to ChatGPT and let ChatGPT explain what an entry point is to you. That is what I was trying to show you in my Evernote. This program you are seeing over here simply it's a function for those who are in the function class you can you can see what's going on here so you can see a function definition here so this is a prototype int add then these are the parameters these are the parameters int a then this is the function itself this is a variable and this is the function code a plus b then after the function code you can see there's a main program int main void then these are variables and then these are this is the function call 
So the name of the function is add. So this is the function call. Okay. Those who are in the functions class easily understand this. Now, when the compiler is going to start working, the first thing it does is that it starts by the main function. How is that there are all these things here? And then the compiler will jump all this process and then start executing the code from here. That is because this is the entry point of the program. The entry point of the program is very important. So you are going to, so that what the compiler does is that it will start from here, then allocate four bytes for I. Why? Because I is, um, I is an um, integer, okay? This prototype is telling us that the parameters are integers. So it's going to allocate four bytes for I and the, the size of an integer, when you read through the resources, you're going to realize it's four bytes. So now the program is going to allocate memory for these. Now when the memory is done, the program is then allocating the memory, it's to allocate memory for the variables. Then it's now going to set the values, to the variables. So it will set the value two to I and four to J. Then now when it is done, it's now going to call the function add. Actually, the function definition was at the beginning of the code, but the program is not going to start from the beginning. At the point when the function is going to be called, it's somewhere at the end of the program before the function is going to be called. If this is confusing to you, don't worry. All I'm trying to explain to you here is that an entry point of your program is the point where your program begins its execution. Later on, you are going to understand why this is important. So the, for our program that prints Hello Akusia, our entry point is in main. This is where the program begins execution. In summary, all we have learned today is that in compiling a C program, you need to pre-process. Can someone just tell me? Pre-processing, compiling, assembling, and linking. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That is all what basically that is all what tomorrow's project um, project is about. That is what we have gone through today. Basically, that is all what tomorrow's project is about. And this is what it means to run code in C. God willing, in our next meeting, I don't know what that's gonna be. We are gonna talk about um we're gonna talk about um variables data types we are going to jump to where we left off last two days and we're going to continue with functions because i need to talk about function um header files for tomorrow's project you need header files so you don't have a problem but after tomorrow's project, you're going to need header files to be able to um, execute your project for ALX. So I need to talk about header files. Then I need to talk about um, prototypes, function prototypes, because for the subsequent projects, you're going to need to put all your function prototypes in a file. So God willing, when we meet again, I'll talk about Variable. I'll just brush through variables, data types, maybe if else statements, for loops, while loops, do while loops, then, then we're also going to talk about header files and function prototypes. So, yeah, I think that's what we'll do next time because in your third project, you're going to now need prototypes. So let's let's do that in our next class. I think this is where we'll end our lecture for today because we are it's currently um, 9-11. We have actually gone beyond our time. So let's end the lecture here today and continue when we meet next time. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your time, sir. So you said when we meet next time, we are meeting tomorrow. Tomorrow is next time and tomorrow is Thursday. And also, um, you said that for now, you and Engineer Dennis, 
uh, we be taking us every day. Did I say every day? Yeah, yeah, you said it today. I should have recorded it. Well, I didn't. I was not. Today. I was not here from the beginning, but I think he said it. He made that promise. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Soul. Yes, yes <laughs> <laughs> So, sir, sir, engineer Donald, engineer Leonard, really brother. Yes, sir. So, Doc has going to find Mr. people to come and corner me. Doc has. <laughs> 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 Tell Sir? Engineer Leonard, tell Engineer Leonard and uh, Dennis that I am here because of them. So if they fall my hand, oh my God. <laughs> they are hearing me now, sir. They are hearing me. They are hearing me. Okay. I have to be here because I needed it. And uh, I am really satisfied that I am here. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have been a very, the little time I spent here, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's worthy of the time. Thank it's you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Then, Thanks, sir. Doctors, thank you very much for the notes you dropped on our group. All right, sir. I'm back the moment now. I, saw it, I have to join. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, sir. So, Engineer Leonard. Tomorrow is our next class, and you told everyone now that you're taking us on data ties. Be able, you know, we, yes. we need this now because <laughs> thank God you we are even doing this. By tomorrow, everybody will be running at us, Peter. Williams, can you just off your mic? <laughs> Docker, Docker, please come now. Docker, you are still your old self. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be. All these people will not allow me to rest. <laughs> so, okay. um, we've talked about that now. Uh -huh. So, we are done with tonight's class. We are still having class by 11. That's our PLD for shell redirection. So, all of you guys are voted 11 to 3 a.m. Make sure you are 11 tomorrow. Today, 11 tonight. Imagine. Okay. So we have class 11 to 3 and um, engineer Dennis and engineer Leonard can talk later about um, how they want to do the class. And that's uh, the money you wanted to give the woman. I already told her to message me. So now that you are sending it to me, you know that you have to put my own shares to it. Or else I'm not going to deliver it to her. Why, that's it. why, why can't I send it, send it to her directly? <laughs> you are the one that said Dockers. You, you, you mentioned Dockers. That I should serve as the intermediate. You, you said it, <laughs> Dockers. You, you said it, sir. So I'm just holding you by your word. I'm going to add your own share. Yeah. So, um, if you have any question, please. Someone is raising their hand. I want uh, Levison. You can go ahead, please. I think you can take some question now before going. <laughs> Our Levison, are you there? I think he's not there. So, if you have any other question, please ask. Apart from questions, any comments or um, anything that could be done better? There all is. If there are no no questions, no um, no uh, comments and all that, I got a woman to call who is gonna shoot me, shoot me if I don't call her. She's gonna <laughs> shoot me, okay? <laughs> if I don't call her, she's gonna shoot me. So, doctors, God bless you. I gotta you go make a, I gotta go make a video call. <laughs> All right, sir. Thank you, sir. And sir, please uh, remind Engineer Dennis to to uh, the videos. 
it should send all the videos within we want our videos and in other news i know you are there please send all our videos so with that being said i think we are good good night sir good night Thank thanks you. for today and thanks for today sir so, amoni no you are sending it to me that is settled <laughs> yes our money very important ah very important we need to, ah, ah. We need to, and next time i'll be the first person to be answering your question so that i can take it here also. i think i'll be doing that a lot every uh -huh. every time we meet i'm going to be randomly dropping um cash prizes for those who are really especially when the question is a little challenging and someone brings the answer i'm immediately gonna drop 100 ghana 100 cd ah, oh oh god. God. <laughs> I, I don't know anytime that means if i can be answering your question every time we <laughs> having class tv or four times no uh five days a week 100 cds is four thousand something in Nigeria. Like four thousand something per times five that oh god i'm a millionaire if I find <laughs> So can you are not among. You cannot be among. You are coordinator. <laughs> be among. This is this one. So coordinator not to spend money, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sir. Thank you, sir. We really appreciate. So good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Take care. Everybody should go now. Good night. Eleven. We are happy. Okay. Bye. Bye. So make sure you join. <laughs> Records, please. Is it with the same link? What do you say? Is it with the same thing? Uh, yes. I think we are going to make use of the link. I still have the link. Yeah, we make use of the link for the PLD. Okay. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. So, Mr. Williams, let's meet on. Yeah, WhatsApp. daughters. It's okay. What's it's up? okay. Thank What's you up? so much. It's all right. It's all right. All right. I'm it's ending okay. this now. PLD start by 11. Be there. Yeah. You guys, you see soft life there. You know, choose. Go, go choose hard life. Soft engineering. You can't be here. Like, you can't say go sleep. You know, go sleep. 11 p.m. to TBA. Take care. All right. You too.